Hello and welcome to another segment of Western Wisconsin Journal. I'm Jamie Johnson, the government political correspondent. And uh, today my guest is candidate for U.S. Senate, Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes. Lieutenant Governor, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me, Jamie. Really excited to talk with you today. All right. And I'm sorry that our schedules just haven't meshed up for you to be able to be live here in the studio. I did have an opportunity to be in the studio with your opponent, Senator Ron Johnson, who's been in Washington for 12 years and is seeking now a third term. And so um, basically he was here and, um, you know, compared his background to yours, called you a community organizer, doesn't have experience, and who is pro-crime and pro-inflation. So uh, I wanted you to respond to that because a lot of our Western Wisconsin viewers only see those negative ads that are running on Twin Cities television. So let me ask you this. Are you uh, pro-crime and pro-inflation? Well, Ron Johnson is simply just an insecure person. He spent 12 years in office doing absolutely nothing except serving himself. Now, I'm pretty sure most of the people who are watching this can't afford to buy three private planes. But Ron Johnson wrote the rules to benefit his own family, his own corporate, his own company, and himself personally. Now, he also runs a quote unquote successful business that has paid zero dollars in state income taxes since 2013. Ron Johnson is a person who is making inflation worse because he is all about making wealthier people even more wealthy while working class people across the state continue to struggle. Now, when it comes to issues like crime, Ron Johnson has pointed every single finger but has not lifted a single one of them to help us out. Now, I've personally dealt with gun violence, losing one of my first friends at high school to gun violence. And this has happened more times than I care to count. Hope nobody ever has to deal with burying a loved one or a friend because of senseless violence. And actually, that's one of the reasons I got involved in public service, to help make our community safer, to stand up to politicians like Ron Johnson who refuse to do a single thing as communities suffer. Now, it would be nice if we had some help. Our administration invested historic sums of money into the uh, into law enforcement, public safety, and crime prevention initiatives, $100 million because of the American Rescue Plan Act, something that Ron Johnson voted against because he'd rather play politics than help out people who are struggling. Okay. Now, when it comes to inflation, he cited deficit spending. Have you presided over any deficit budgets or deficit spending? I'll tell you, Ron Johnson had no problem blowing a $2 trillion hole in the deficit to deliver tax breaks for billionaires. And I've been a part of uh, two consecutive budget writing cycles here in the state of Wisconsin. And now we're operating in a surplus. We got money uh, has already been going back into the pockets of hardworking people. We need do more of it. And Ron Johnson has only been in favor of making rich people even more wealthy. Now, look, the reality is with inflation as high as it is right now, you look at oil and gas industry. These are industries, executives of these industries are making record profits while charging us higher and higher prices. Grocery store prices, the checkout line, it's getting tougher for working families. At the same time, these large grocery chains are making record profits. We are footing the bill for multi-million dollar lifestyles so that Ron Johnson and his allies can have a better quality of life than the rest of us. And it's not fair. And that's what we're fighting to change. Speaking of quality of life, health care is a big issue, right? And uh, I know that uh, Senator Johnson has had more than one opportunity uh, to be able to strengthen health care for the elderly and when it came to what was called Obamacare. Um, how would you vote if given that opportunity if you're elected? Well, Ron Johnson voted to repeal the Affordable Care Act, and he'd do it again if he had the opportunity to be voted against, or he's not, he's against letting Medicare negotiate prescription drug costs. He's against capping the cost of insulin. Now he wants to put Medicare itself on the chopping block. Yeah, I think we need universal health care in this country. Nobody should go to a doctor and have to worry about a surprise bill. People shouldn't be going bankrupt because of an emergency room visit. Families shouldn't have to ration insulin or other life-saving medications. But in Ron Johnson's America, that's the case. And that's because he's bought and paid for by pharmaceutical industries and industry, or excuse me, and insurance industries. That's who Ron Johnson represents. And sadly, uh, we aren't a part of that equation. Well, a lot of people have said this election, democracy is on the line because of what happened uh, following the 2020 presidential election and the January 6th insurrection and so forth. Um, where would you stand with uh, giving um, a small percentage of, uh, of political leaders the ability or the power to overturn elections in certain areas? Well, given the fact that 
Senator Johnson didn't like an election result, so he tried to overturn the whole thing, is what should give everyone pause. Democracy is actually on the ballot. We're talking about a person who didn't like the election results, so he thought that he should take it upon himself to send fraudulent electors to the vice president in an attempt to overturn a free and fair election, supporting a violent insurrection that led to 140 officers being injured, one stab with a metal stake, another hit with a fire extinguisher, another crush, and a revolving door, just to name a few. Now, that's, that's what Ron Johnson's thoughts are on when it comes to democracy, his way or the highway. But that's not the way we do things in this state. We value our democracy, even if it isn't working out for Ron Johnson. Okay. Well, I, I know that uh, you are very busy. We got less than a week to go to the election. Uh, where can people find out more or where you actually stand on the issues as opposed to watching negative ads on TV? Absolutely. Please uh, stop by MandelaBarnes.com. You'll find all the information to clarify the facts. And we cut through the noise that Ron Johnson is promoting. Now, the reality is, Ron Johnson's had 12 years to do something for us. He's decided not to. And I want people who are looking at the ads on television to think long and hard about the fact that they aren't seeing things talking about what he's done for us over those last 12 years, because it's been absolutely nothing. Only thing he can do is try to lie and distract uh, from the fact that he has only been in it for himself and the most wealthy individuals in this country. $215 million in tax deductions for two of his biggest donors. $215 million between two families in one year in tax deductions because Ron Johnson decided to rewrite the rules to favor the wealthy, leaving working class families in the dust as a person who doesn't want to see wages go up for working people. It's a person who doesn't think we should have uh, family leave programs. It's a person who doesn't think that folks should have health care in this country. It's a shame that he's given up on us. We need somebody who's going to fight for us, not a person who's going to fight against us. All right. Well, uh, we're seeing you today uh, via Zoom, but uh, are you planning on coming through the western Wisconsin area uh, in the next week before the election? We do have a few stops planned. All right. Well, and people can go to the Mandela barns.com to find out where you will be and when you'll be there. Anyway, I want to thank you for uh, your time and uh, good luck in the upcoming election. Hey, thank you so much for having me.